Hey everyone, so I just wanted to make a video uh, going through some of the stuff that we talked about today involving trigonometric identities and going through a couple different examples. So first thing is uh, we talked about a bunch of different trigonometric identities. We had a bunch that I gave you basically that you're going to be using eventually to prove some more trigonometric identities. So we had uh, kind of a two main trigonometric identities. Right Here are the main two trigonometric identities. Tangent of theta is equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta. And sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals one. These are the are the main identities. These two, along with the reciprocal identities, are going to be uh, basically useful in pretty much every uh, trigonometric identity you're trying to prove. Uh, you can use uh, these and the reciprocal identities to prove anything we're going to do this year. Okay, but I did give you uh, uh, about three other trigonometric ident identities that can be useful sometimes, but aren't going to be completely necessary. So the first one was the cotangent of theta is equal to the cosine of theta divided by the sine of theta. Then we have uh, the second and third Pythagorean identities. 1 plus tangent squared of theta is equal to secant squared of theta. And 1 plus cotangent squared of theta is equal to cosecant of theta, uh, squared of theta. So these are sometimes useful if you remember them, but they're not mandatory to remember because, um, because we can do everything with uh, these, the, the main two identities and the reciprocal identities. So again... The main two identities are important, right? Very, very important. The other useful identities are going to be useful sometimes, but they're not necessary. So let's take a look at an example. So let's suppose I want to express cotangent squared of theta minus cosecant squared of theta in some simpler form. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, this expression, cotangent squared of theta minus cosecant squared of theta, and I want to see if I can just notice some, something about, uh, about this, uh, this expression that I kind of uh, work with. So I want you to notice that cosecant squared of theta, well, we have an identity that involves cosecant squared of theta. Remember that cosecant squared of theta is equal to 1 plus cotangent squared of theta. Okay, I think that was our third Pythagorean identity. So what that means is I can actually replace cosecant squared of theta with 1 plus cotangent squared of theta. So I'm going to do that in my next line. And that's going to give me cotangent squared of theta minus, instead of cosecant squared of theta, 1 plus cotangent squared of theta. Okay? All right. So what, what can we do next? Well, I want you to notice that we are subtracting 1 plus cotangent squared of theta. And what that means is I can actually uh, multiply that negative inside, right? It's like multiplying by negative 1. So that's going to give us cotangent squared of theta minus 1 minus cotangent squared of theta. And then I want you to notice that I have cotangent squared of theta and minus cotangent squared of theta, so they will cancel. And that just leaves me with negative 1. So that simplifies just to negative 1. So cotangent squared of theta minus cosecant squared of theta simplifies to negative 1. Okay? Let's take a look at one more example. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to fact uh, factor to simplify tangent squared of theta times sine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta. So we have this expression. We want to simplify that, but we're going to start by factoring to simplify it. Okay, so let me just re rewrite that, uh, that expression for now. Tangent squared of theta times sine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta. So I want you to notice that we have sine squared of theta in both terms. Okay, since sine squared of theta occurs in both terms, I can common factor out sine squared of theta. So let's common factor that out. Right, so if I'm common factoring out sine squared of theta, I'm going to have sine squared of theta out front, and then I'm going to have some stuff in brackets. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be dividing each term by sine squared of theta. So tangent squared of theta times sine squared of theta divided by sine squared of theta just leaves the tangent squared of theta left. Okay, and then we have sine squared of theta divided by sine squared of theta. That gives us just 1. Okay. All right, next I want you to notice inside the brackets there that we have tangent squared of theta plus 1. That might look familiar to you guys. So you might remember that 1 plus tangent squared of theta is secant squared of theta. I believe that was our first Pythagorean identity. Okay, so since uh, 1 plus tangent squared of theta is secant squared of theta, I'm going to replace what we have in the brackets with secant squared of theta. And that's going to give us sine squared of theta times secant squared of theta. Okay, um, but well, so well, we might be able, be able to stop here, but actually we can go a couple steps further. All right, so I'm going to show you how we might be able to go a couple steps further, make this a little simpler. Uh, secant squared of theta, you might remember, according to our reciprocal uh, identities, well, that's going to be uh, 1 over cosine squared of theta. So 
I'm going to replace secant squared of theta with 1 over cosine squared of theta. Let's see what we get. That's going to give us sine squared of theta times 1 over cosine squared of theta. Multiplying these two out, we just get sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta. And that's going to give us tangent squared of theta because sine over cosine is tangent. So sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. Okay, So this entire expression, tangent squared of theta times sine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta can all be simplified down into tangent squared of theta. Okay, guys? Um, so this is just a couple examples uh, to maybe help you out with the homework. I would say that this second one that we just did here is a little bit more complicated than, than most of the questions you're going to get in the homework. Um, but at least you've seen an example of kind of going through the process here. All right, so you're going to do your best to try to recognize parts of an expression that you kind of uh, recognize from any of our trigonometric identities that we dealt with earlier. Uh, and you're going to be doing a lot of, you know, substituting in values, well, not values, but substituting in other expressions. Okay, so I hope this is going to help with the homework, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.